The American Heart Association claims that intermittent fasting might actually increase the risk of cardiovascular deaths. As a med student, instead of taking their word as face value, I embarked on a quest for the truth. In this video, I'll walk you through my journey of discovery, where I went through research articles, including those from the American Heart Association and other scientific papers, which led me to a surprising conclusion, one that challenges conventional wisdom, and I can't wait to share it with you. Before we dive right in, I'd like to begin by reminding us about the meaning of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting involves limiting the hours for eating to a specific number of hours each day, which may range from a 4 to 12 hour time window in 24 hours. Many people who follow a time restricted eating diet follow a 16 to 8 hour eating schedule, which means they take in all their meal within 8 hours and fast for 16 hours. To answer the question of whether the research is true or sus, let's look at some of the write-ups from the article posted by the American Heart Association themselves. In the third paragraph of the article, one of the researchers had this to say, Restricting daily eating time to a short period, such as 8 hours per day, has gained popularity in recent days as ways to lose weight and improve heart health. However, the long-term effects of time-restricted eating, including the risk of death from any cause or cardiovascular disease, are unknown. This is one of the true statements from the article, keyword being unknown. After that, they continued giving more details of how they came about their data for the study and what they found from the study. According to the article, they reviewed information about dietary patterns for participants in the annual 2003-2018 National Health and nutrition examination surveys in comparison to data about people who died in the U.S. from 2003 through December 2019. Before we proceed, I would just like to put it here that according to Wikipedia, intermittent fasting was popularized by Michael Mosley in the U.K. and Australia in 2012 after the BBC television horizon documentary Eat Fast and Live Longer. This implies that the study conducted by the American Health Association was not likely to be on people observing intermittent fasting when you look at the time frame, but rather on people who ate randomly and whose eating window coincidentally fell within the 8-hour window. And most people who eat randomly are not really diet conscious, so this means they probably ate whatever they wanted, whether heart healthy or not. That said, this is what they found from the information reviewed according to the American Heart Association article. 1. People who followed a pattern of eating all their food across less than 8 hours per day had a 91% higher risk of death due to cardiovascular disease. 2. Among people with existing cardiovascular disease, an eating duration of no less than 8 but less than 10 hours per day was also associated with a 6% higher risk of death from heart disease or stroke. In simple terms, this statement is saying that among people who already have heart problems, eating for between 8 and 10 hours a day is connected to a higher risk of dying from heart disease or stroke. 3. Time-restricted eating did not reduce the overall risk of death from any cause, and an eating duration of more than 16 hours per day was associated with a lower risk of cancer mortality among people with cancer. I find all their points so far to be uh, very ambiguous, but the last point is even more interesting. The last point states that eating more than 16 hours per day was associated with a lower risk of cancer mortality among people with cancer, without specifying the type of food to eat or any other thing. So, if a random person with cancer decides to binge each on several unhealthy fast foods, does this mean it will lower their risk of cancer mortality just because they eat for 16 hours per day? After this statement, they went ahead to give more details on how they came about the results of the study, stating that the study included approximately 20,000 adults in the U.S. with an average age of 49 years. Study participants were followed for a median length of 8 years and a maximum length of 17 years. To be honest, at this point, it felt like they were filling the article with information and research data to just distract us from the main point the fact that the research might not be uh, so credible if I may add. Oh, and now let's get to my favorite part of the whole article, the limitations of the research. This is interesting. According to the article, the study's limitation included its reliance on self-reported dietary information, which may be 
affected by participants' memory or recall and may not accurately access typical eating patterns. Factors that may also play a role in the health outside of the daily duration of eating and cause of death are not included in the analysis. The first limitation isn't too much of a concern, but the second limitation implies that other risk factors that could cause death from cardiovascular disease, such as high blood pressure, high LDL cholesterol, diabetes, smoking and secondhand smoke exposure, obesity, unhealthy diet, and physical inactivity were not considered in the research. On a normal day, one would think these risk factors would come even higher than diet when it comes to their importance as a cause of death from cardiovascular disease, if not higher, probably on the same level, but they weren't considered in the research. From all these, I truly believe that they might be going somewhere with their research, but then, rather than putting out, should I call it, uh, premature facts and scaring the public, maybe, just maybe, they should spend a little more time conducting research. And I'll be ending with this. Just because there is a link between shorter eating windows and bad health outcomes in a particular population doesn't mean the eating window caused the outcome. For example, research shows you are more likely to drown if you've recently eaten ice cream. It would be easy to conclude that eating ice cream leads to drowning. Yet, a closer look shows that more people eat ice cream in warmer weathers when they are more likely to swim and drown. Thus, ice cream correlates with drowning but doesn't cause drowning. So that's it. In my opinion, the research points are not credible enough and should be taken with a pinch of salt. So, do I think it's true or sus? Well, the ball is no longer in my court, guys. Lots of things point to sus. And I'll be concluding with this. Always remember to consult your doctor and engage in lots of research before you go ahead to start whatever routine or lifestyle changes that might affect your health. So, what do you think? Drop your opinions in the comment section and let's talk about it.